Hello, Froggy here, and today we'll be taking a look at the Vesper's Host Dungeon. There's quite a lot of fun out of map stuff to do here, and I'm definitely not going to be covering it all here, but I figure we'll start off with going through to the end with no encounters. We'll first be jumping down here and there is an intangible wall panel. You can cut around this corner and then work your way through this part. It's a little bit annoying because you can't really walk up it and there's a lot of intangible barriers and walls to move through. You can kind of sneak through here. The easiest way is to just keep swinging and you'll move up. Quite similar to that same sort of section in Deep Stone Crypt. You may have noticed a lot of similarities throughout uh, the dungeon to various parts of Deep Stone. But Deep Stone's pretty great, so I am not sad about that at all. So in the middle of this, there's a gap that you can walk through. And uh, it's actually pretty convenient to climb up this side, because then you don't even have to use a grapple to get up. Although you can also just use a grapple or navigator to get up this way. And from here there is a little lip you can walk across to get to the next area. You could go on top as well, but this is a little bit easier. One step ahead of you. We are already out. So this allows you to skip, I guess, the zero one transition, which is also a sequence break. That'll come in handy in a follow-up video, but for my own sanity, I've decided to break out IRB shenanigans into their own thing. So this area is a little bit tricky, lots of turnbacks, but you can jump over this first bit and anytime the turnback gets too high, just go left into the push barrier and you're good. And then just slide down. Sometimes it takes me a few tries to get that slide right. And now we are outside of first encounter. Going to be taking a little detour into there. But that's the direction you would go to continue out of map. Just on the wrong side of a wall there. I just jump over here and you can jump up right back into the encounter. This is the only flag you'll come across doing uh, this sequence break, so... I would recommend taking advantage of it, especially since we were using our sword so much to move around. Let's take a little time to look around first while we're here. So, pretty much immediately in contest mode, I ran into this, so we were checking out these rooms before even attempting first. It is quite nice that you can do this, means making the, uh, I guess, teaching runs a little bit easier because you can go in and look at all of the buttons and whatnot. You can naturally get into the other side. I haven't figured out a way to get into the heart room, though, without that door being open. You can get outside of it, but... Not quite the same. So there is a fairly sizable out of map in this area. This is not it. Although up there is kind of neat too, so I'm just going to take a quick look. kind of jump up into some cubbies around here. A 
But yeah, I can't, uh, can't go too far that way. Now, he showed me an incredibly silly hole in here. So, back up by the wall where we came in, there is something that kind of looks like a hole, but only part of it is actually open. See, I just mantled up a wall. And then there's another invisible barrier. And then this corner is just intangible. And now we're outside of the catch. Very silly. That's a very big ship. I wish we could explore more of the outside of it, but... Unfortunately, they seem to have used the inverted turnbacks again, so... Not really much hope of being able to do much with box breaks here. Although we did find a use for uh, IRBs. But that'll be in a follow-up video. But yeah, there's a fair bit of the outside of this catch, and like, you can see how the other two rooms connect. There's just a single door separating the two areas. Well, I've got a little bit of time. I just wanted to mention that the dungeon exploration has been quite a collaborative effort. A lot of people helped make the various parts of this route and helped to refine bits of it. Now, when you're done with this area, you can just jump back out the way you came. Uh, through the intangible ceiling. And anyways, a partial list. We had Crash, Avi, Cube 17, Elite Eater of Crayons, David DG, Solus, bunch of other people on the Singularity server, and more. Sorry if I forgot to mention you by name. Anyway, let's continue further into the dungeon. Since we did a sequence break on the 0-1 transition, the shield barrier that would prevent us from going forwards isn't there, so we're free to just walk through this first section. Unfortunately, we haven't figured out a way to skip the first three bombs, so you're going to have to do that. If you're starting from a first CP, or if you go through the first area in the normal way, the shield barrier will block your movement, but you can just go back in the hole we came in from and skip to the bomb section. You can see the heart room over there. So I think that's the, uh, yeah, that's the heart room. I've been so busy doing out-of-map shenanigans that I have barely progressed the, uh, the quest. Although I'll probably have another video on the quest, because you can get it all in a single run if you do some shenanigans. This is probably the trickiest bit of this. You're going to want to back up here so that you can walk on this. Don't fall down there or you'll have a bad time. And I'm going to crouch forwards, line up with that gap up top, and then eager swing into it, and that'll push you up. So, it would be easy to get past this on Stasis Titan, but I want to do this in a bit more of a class agnostic way. And I'm going to use Salvation's Grip here. You could just swap to Stasis, but I don't feel like waiting for that. Well, that didn't go according to plan. We're doing a little crouch jumping here. I'm gonna try shooting down instead. If you crouch within a stasis crystal, then jump, you remain crouched. And there we go. I have jumped right up into that small gap. A simple right turn here. And then you can crouch underneath these pipes. 
And that'll bring you back to the same place. I don't currently know of any way to skip the first three bombs of the 1-2 transition. But I will let you know if we figure something out. If you're not comfortable doing this solo, I would highly recommend having a buddy do it with you so that you don't go all the way back to the beginning if you wipe. You'll need to collect the first three bombs and deposit them. But I'm just gonna skip ahead. Luckily, the bombs don't wipe you when you sequence break. I'm not sure if they normally wipe you, because I didn't really run into that, but... While we were doing oob shenanigans, one fell through the floor and it went off and nothing happened, so... In case they do, they don't with the sequence break. You don't need to pick up any bombs after the third one, because we can just go straight to another hole. I just want to mine the boss. He likes to delete you with line of sight and whatnot. So, right here, as soon as I saw it, screamed out of map to me. Although in contest mode, I didn't really take the time to look around, and others informed me that it was in fact a hole. We can just go on the left and crouch and get through here. And this next part is a little bit scary in a darkness zone, because there are kill barriers and turn back, so you'll want to follow along. If you're doing this on Titan, you're going to want to draw, or I guess on anything, you'll want to drop down a little bit and maybe eager swing across, although you can't jump across and manage to get to the uh, load in time. I died to it there, which is a little bit unfortunate, but because I hadn't died yet, it, uh, auto respawn to me. If you had previously died, it would give you a 45 second counter in that circumstance. Luckily for us, the airlock doors do work. I was quite worried about that the first time we got stuck in there. If you don't die to the load, you'll end up around here. But there are several ways to get out. There's a hole over on the left side that I used to use, but Cube 17 told me about a much nicer one over here. I think I'm a little bit too high. But you're looking for that kind of slanted panel there, and if you jump on top of it, you'll get out. You can see that there is a sliver of area you can go through. And that'll put us right on the other side of the airlock. Now, once again, the paths are reunited. And from here, getting to second encounter is quite trivial. We can just walk right there. And because the encounter is not active, we can jump up to where the boss would teleport to as well. See all the buttons and whatnot. There's no server to pull you to the top area, but there is a little thing you can jump on, which is pretty much just as good. I don't know how to get further than this point. Maybe a hunter could play barrage above here, or maybe a warlock, but we can get to third anyways. But to do that, we're going to want to head back to the first zone. Luckily, we can just take that hole from before in reverse avoid the death barriers, and jump up top. I don't remember this jump being quite that difficult. And that's because I didn't need to come up here. I tried to get on this roof. Whoops. But yeah, if you want to head back to the first zone, you can use a grapple to go uh, over here. There's a lot of turnbacks. I'm using Navigator because I often overshoot it and I just want my retries to be a little bit quicker. You can do it just fine with a regular grapple. You're aiming for a hole in the top here. 
and once you drop down, you'll immediately get into the first encounter area. It's important that you come from the first encounter when you go here. Otherwise, the fallback point you'll get will not be the one that you want. I'm pretty sure I set a spawn point, so I'm going to go back up here to reset it. You do hit some turnbacks, which is a little bit weird. This time I'm going to be a bit more careful to die after the load, so I don't have any spawn points set. So, the default spawn, as you saw before when I died to the load, is right around here. We're going to be doing a fallback point, so you're going to need Salvation Script. And you're going to want to go to the doorway to place your crystals, because the small crystals are not high enough to block the spawn points, and you'll just spawn above them if you try from other angles. I think I may have placed those a little too far back, so we'll... Yeah, that definitely, uh, definitely didn't go far enough. I'm just going to go right back to the door and shoot them a little bit more forwards. Broke the close crystals, but hopefully it's fine because I'm out of. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, I'm out of uh, heavy ammo now. So if you come back down here, you can hit the load for the. Well, die the load again, but for the uh, third zone. Kind of weird that the fallback puts you on the far side of the load zone, but I'm not complaining. Before we go to the end, I want to highlight another fallback. And to do this one, you need to go from the second encounter to the first encounter. The first encounter was a darkness zone, but I'm doing this from a boss checkpoint, so... Neither of these two zones are darkness zones for me. Now, jumping back here, dying to get the default spawn. If uh, you join in first encounter and uh, try to do this, you'll spawn back at the beginning, so it's a way to go back if you start at the uh, end of the raid. Well, dungeon. More of a raid than root, though, so, you know. Anyways, I'm blocking off this area. And the fallback point is the same as what we saw in the second zone. Which would be awesome, because it's out of box, but unfortunately the inverted turnbacks ruin our fun, so we won't be diving into the anomaly today. Anyways, back to the end. We're just a few short jumps from reaching the end of the dungeon, and while we can explore the lower floors, I am leaving that for a follow-up video. So for now, you'll just have to be content with the very nice view at the end of this dungeon. I really enjoyed doing this on contest mode, and no doubt will enjoy doing regular run-throughs of it. Kind of like a mini-raid. In much more of a sense than normal. But before we head out, might as well show what we can reach going backwards from here without doing any fallback shenanigans. If you add fallbacks into the mix, you can go all the way back to the beginning of the dungeon. But there is still a section that is missing, so... If you figure out how to get into the first half of the 2-3 transition without doing any encounters, I would be very interested to know about it. I haven't put in too much work to trying to get into it, but so far I haven't had much luck. It's nice and relaxing to be in this area without having to 
worry about your average space lightning, but it still saddens me that I have been unable to go beyond the barriers that you can currently see in front of me. Was hoping that the signs would have holes, but no luck so far. But I'm sure I'll be doing more in this dungeon, so I hope you have enjoyed this tour, and happy exploring. <laughs> <laughs>